Hey everyone. So we're in another end-to-end -end video in the series here. And in this one, I'm going to show how you can use ML.NET within a mobile application here. And just to kind of show what we're going to build, we have a page here where we can put all of our fields in. Then we hit this predict button and it gives us a pop-up of our prediction. So let's build that real quick. And Visual Studio, create a new project. I'm going to create a Xamarin Forms project here. It's going to be a mobile app, Xamarin Forms. If you don't have this, you may have to go to the Visual Studio installer here and click on Modify on the version that you're using and make sure mobile development with .NET is checked. Uh, if you need to install it, though, be prepared to wait a while because it has a lot to install. All right, so call it one prediction. And I'll just go for the defaults here with the flyout template. All right, and so what they actually give you here is actually pretty nice. They give you a lot that you can work with, a bunch of views, uh, view models, how you use the service. Uh, so since we're on Windows, uh, we're just going to use Android. Uh, if you have a, if you're on a Mac or if you have a Mac that you can connect on your on your network, then you can use uh, iOS. But I'll just stick with Android here. All right. So let's see. The first thing, let's create a new view here. All right. It'll be a content page, and we will call it prediction page. All right. It comes with a stack layout. I'm going to remove that, and I'm going to add a scroll view so we can scroll through our items here. And from here, I'll add a stack layout. I'll tell the orientation is going to be vertical. Uh, let's just give it some padding. Let's see, 16, 40, and 16. And then another 40. Spacing of 10. So in here, let's start adding a label. The text is going to be that one type label here. And if you saw here, this is going to be like a drop down menu that we, where you can select different items. And we do that by adding a picker. We do selected index is zero, so it doesn't have anything. Inside here, we do picker.items source. And we're just going to hard code these items because we know what they're going to be. So if we give it an array, it's going to be a type of, let's see, type string. And in here, we give it a string. It's going to be red. And we do another one for white. So that's the one type now. Do another label. Give it a text of fixed acidity. And this is just going to be a regular entry. Now I'm going to go ahead and bind these two items for the picker. To do that, we do selected item. Selected item. And we're going to bind to a view model here. So we do binding and that view model property is going to be called one type. And then similar to this entry here, we'll do the text and we're going to bind the text here. With binding and it's going to be called fixed acidity. And so I'm just going to paste the rest of these. And if you haven't done Xamarin forms before, uh, I'll link some resources in the description to go over like MVVM for binding and, and stuff like that. So we have the other items here with their bindings. So next let's do a, that button there. Give it the text, call it predict. And instead of using this clicked event handler, I'm going to give it a command so we can bind to it. Say binding, call it predict command. All right, and that should do it for our view here. So next let's go into our code behind. So we have initialize component. Now in order for this bonding here to work, we need to associate the page with the view model. We do that by setting the bonding context. Bonding context. So it's going to equal a predict view model. Call it view model. So I'm going to set that bonding context equal to the view model, which that's going to be equal to a new predict view model. So let's create this view model here. 
of the new view models, just a regular class, and we called it predict model. Make it public. Now the cool thing again about this template is that it gives you this base view model, which already inherits from I notify property changed, and it gives you this set property method that you can use. So we just do the same thing here. We inherit by base view model. So let's add a couple of things. First, we'll add that command that we added for the button click. So it's going to be a, an I command. And we called it predict command. And we don't set this, so we just made it read only for a get. And next, we'll create properties for each of our items that we bounded in here. And we do a full property instead of a auto backing property. So in here, it's going to be, we we'll have a string. It's going to be one type. And one type here. Right. And we mentioned that set property method. And the set of our properties, we're just going to add that set property method. And we reference the one type value here. And then we send the value to it. So every time this property gets updated, it gets notified that it got updated. All right, so I'm going to paste the rest of these because these are all the same for each of the items in the page. All right, and for this command here, let's create a constructor. And then we'll set this predict command, set it as a new command. And just takes in a method. We can send an async lambda me method in here. And we say await. And we'll call another method called execute predict command. And then here we'll create that execute predict command here. There we go. Uh, I'll leave this blank for now. Uh, but first, we need a way to call that ml.net API that we created in the last video, the one that we deployed to. So to do that, I'm going to go up to services, create another class there for a service. I'll call it prediction service. All right, and this is going to use a HTTP client. And then I'll create a constructor here, where I set the client equals to new HTTP client, and I'm set the base address to a new URI, and I'm going to use the deployed URL here for our API. So it's going to go up to Azure for uh, that call there, and I'll make a public async method here. It's going to return a string. I'm going to call it predict. It's going to take in a class of one data. So we'll create this class in a second. But first, let's start filling out this method here. And well, I know what I wanted to do because I'm sending to this API. I need to send some JSON data to it. And since I'm sending this class, I need to be able to serialize that this class into a JSON string. So to do that, let's add a NuGet package. We're going to do system.txt.json. You can use Newton salt if you want, but I'm partial to the one that Microsoft did here. And I want to first add some options to how I want it to serialize. So new JSON serializer options. And I wanted to say the property name case insensitive would be true. What this is going to do is the properties in this class are going to be uppercase. And what this is going to do, is it's just going to lowercase those items when it serializes into JSON string. So now I can create the JSON string by calling JSON serializer, serialize, send in the one data and then the options. And then I get some content here, I'm saying a new string content. Send in that JSON string. Set the encoding. 
to UTF-8 and say I want it to be application JSON for the media type. Then here I can get a response by calling the client post async. And I'll call it the model API and send in that, that content. And then I can get the response by calling await response dot content and then read as string async. Now if you remember the model is just going to bring us back a string of the predicted quality. So I just return this prediction back to it. There's nothing to deserialize or anything like that. Alright, so now we got our predict method. Let's create this one data model here. So we have a models item called line data. Here we go. And this is going to kind of mimic uh, the one data class that we use to create our prediction. So we will have something like a string of a type that we get in there. Since we're serializing this into a JSON string, I'm going to add some JSON property names to it. And then I'm just going to lowercase these so that it knows how to serialize it properly. And for the other items, I'm going to uh, just paste these in. Got that one data. So let's go back to our view model here and let's fill out this execute predict command method. So first we need to get our data as that one data type. And we do that by just filling out these properties. So type is going to be equal to the one type property in here. And I will let me just paste the rest of these in. Here we go. So now we can get the quality by calling a prediction service that predict that predict method that we created and then just pass in the data but now we need an instance of the prediction service so let's go up to the top here we'll create a private prediction service instance here and it's going to be called prediction service Bring in that namespace for it. There we go. And now in our constructor, all the way down here, we'll set that prediction service equal to a new instance of the, that class. So now we have that. So now we get the prediction. You know what? Let's put a breakpoint there and let's build this and see how this work, how this looks so far. It's like we missed something here. We need to bring in this the namespace for this. Now let's try this again. All right, so our application deployed to our emulator here, and it has some stuff from that template here. But we have this menu, and of course I forgot to add our page to this menu. So let's go back. All right, to so add this, we need to go to the app shell here, and then just in the fly up menu item, we just add a new shell content item called predict uh, the content template will give it the data template that's going to be local prediction page here we go so now let's run this all right so we go over here we have our predict and we actually have it already down here as well another icon we can click that and there's that let's fill it out real quick Alright, so click predict. There we go. Make sure it goes. Here's a prediction for us. There we go. So we got prediction. Alright, so next we need to tell the user about our prediction. And what we did before was we had that pop up message go through. Now, in order to do a pop up in our page, we have access to display alert method. However, we don't have access to our prediction here. That's in our view model. So how can we talk from our view model to our page? Well, from that, well, for that, we can use something called the messaging center. And to do that, we just call messaging center. And we're in the view model, so we'll send it. Takes a couple of parameters. The sender will say this. 
the message we'll say predict and then we'll give it some arguments here and that's where we send the quality now in our page here we use messaging center that subscribe taking that sender which will be the predict v model and that's what sent the message and the argument that is sent is going to be a string and the parameters subscriber is going to be this the message is going to be predict and this this needs to match what we send here otherwise it won't uh, catch the message that is sent and the next is how we handle the message that is got sent back from here we can just do an async lambda met method it's an object and then the prediction that object is just going to be this here and then await display alert let's give it the title prediction then in the message we'll say one quality prediction then our last parameter is just what we want to our cancel button to say I'll just put okay there we go so let's run this once more make sure that works I'm going to predict and then we'll fill these out again predict oh, there you go so we got our pop-up of our prediction all right so that's pretty much how you can uh, currently uh, use ml.net within uh, Xamarin app uh, basically just to create a, an API that uses the model and then you use that API within your Xamarin application I believe and .NET 5 or something called Maui which I always think about the Moana character, the, the rock voice right now, but maybe eventually I'll start thinking about Xamarin and .NET when somebody mentions that. But when that comes out, we can actually, uh, we should be able to actually load the model within our application here. Uh, for instance, if we can check if the phone has connectivity, if it does, we can use the API, so it'll always use the latest model. But if not, we can ship ship it with a model and then use that model if there is no connectivity but i'll end things there i uh, hope you enjoyed the video and i'll see y'all next time thanks